Boston. Much more powerful. He's a narcissist, too. So first, I just want to say that today is a special day. Today is, I don't know if you can see this, Furtherance's birthday. So it was three years ago today that I uh, released the first stable version of Furtherance. And I was shocked when I released it and like a thousand people immediately downloaded it after it was in the uh, GNOME newsletter. Today in GNOME, that's what it's called. Um, and yeah, it was just really cool feeling. I had built a bunch of apps before and none had ever gotten more than like a few downloads really. And it was really nice to see something I made uh, be useful to a bunch of other people. So that's why I still work on it. So with that being said, that's what I'm doing. So here is what I've got so far on the mobile app. So I just implemented the Pomodoro timer. So I set it to start at one minute. So if I test it, you can see it counts down. And then once it's about to finish, it pops up with this alert. So you can either stop or take a break. And it does have these little bars at the top and bottom when that happens. Um, I'm gonna have to get rid of those. So that's a little bug, but you can take a break. Now there's a two minute break. It recorded the time and you can keep going like that. So it does show a little bit more than one minute here and that's because it counts the time before you hit the button. And I just think that makes sense because if you are doing something and you're recording the time and then the alert pops up but you don't get to it right away because you're still doing the thing, that time should count for uh, what you actually did. I don't think you should just lose that extra time before you got to the alert. So this is the code that I created for that. So let's just start with when the Pomodoro timer ends here. So if you're not on an extended break, you can take a break or you can stop. And these two things run these different functions. So let's go to start break. And basically here, I'm just changing the, saving the input uh, that the user put in for the task because it's gonna reset when I stop the timer. So I just save that there, reset everything, then write that back to the task input. And then I just turn off the alert. So the alert goes away and then the timer starts again and now it's gonna be uh, on the break timer. So then it just updates the task history so that the user can see the task in the list. Just real quick, one of the ways I'm supporting these videos is through my freelance business. So if you need any software developed, whether it's a desktop app, mobile app, or pretty much anything else, especially written in Rust, then check out the link in the description and give me a shout. One thing I found when I was doing this was that it's actually not possible to update the state in Dioxys, at least not the way that I'm doing it, in a spawn async. So this is like a Tokyo spawn, but it's actually from Dioxys core. Um, and I had this update task history in there before because I wanted that to happen asynchronously so that the user didn't have to wait for it, even though it's really fast and there's n never been any notice that I could see that it's actually happening. But still, I just wanted it to be async. But when I put it in there, the task history list wasn't updating at all. So I had to take that out and I'm probably gonna have to do the same for this sync in case, like I put a to-do here in case the updates from the sync don't actually show up right away. So I'm not sure exactly why that's the case in Dioxys. I'm gonna have to look a little bit more into that, but from what I could find right now is you couldn't have um, something that updates state in a spawn. But yeah, that's basically all there is to the Pomodoro timer. I thought it was gonna actually be a little bit harder and it ended up being pretty simple. But now I need to work on, let's see, implementing the uh, add new task button. And I've actually already done that if you look over here on the app. So that little plus button at the top right, that is the add new task button. 
And so when the user clicks that, uh, another window is going to pop up over top. I haven't decided exactly how I want that to look yet, but another window is going to pop up and then you'll be able to add all the task info, like the name, project, tags, all that, that you can normally enter and the start and stop time. So that'll just create a task in the list that's already completed in case the user wants to uh, input a task that they forgot to record or something like that. So that's what I'm working on next, and that will be the next video. Oh, one quick thing I just wanted to mention was, you already saw it, but I have this little um, dialog here. So the cool thing about that dialog is it looks just like the iOS alert dialog that pops up on an iPhone. And I was just able to do that with CSS and HTML in Dioxys. So I think that's really cool and it's like a nice touch to make it actually look like it's a native app rather than it's in a web view. And I would like to do the same thing for Android later as well so that on Android it pops up looking like Android, on iOS it pops up looking like iOS. So if you'd like to see how I do that or how I did that, uh, let me know in the comments and I might make a whole another tutorial just on creating that thing and how I made it pop up with state and everything else. So yeah, let me know and I will see you in the next video when we are working on the add new task feature.